How's everybody doing and welcome to the fish room. Today's video I thought I'd do a little walk around the fish room, uh, do kind of like a fish room tour and show some changes and a few things I want to add. So if you're new to the channel, uh, over here I have the majority of my tanks here on a custom stand. Um, if you guys are subscribed already, you already know this stuff, thank you for watching. Um, if not, go ahead below, subscribe to the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Just an overall view of the room, and I'll go through some tanks, uh, maybe all the tanks I'll go quick and kind of show you what I have. Um, but the room is enclosed, it has its own door, uh, so the room is heated. I run all of my filters off of air, so I have some sponge filters. Uh, back here I got one of my pumps from Gemco. Uh, it's actually due for some maintenance, uh, overdue I should say. So I'm going to order some filters, parts for that. I might even just buy an entire pump, switch it out and keep that one as a backup. Uh, just because I've had great luck with it and I want to push my luck and have something fail and not have air running on the tanks for a few days. Um, so I have a wall tank over there, my 55 gallon. A lot of these tanks I've done videos on, that's like my fake aquascaping. I got a little shrimp and moss tank in there. I breed guppies, uh, bristlenose plecos, German blue rams. I got some matten filters on the 10 gallon rack. Uh, those are my only tanks I use that go long ways. And then got my heater. And it continues to wrap around and these are those black wrought iron stands. Uh, just temporary tanks. Whenever I eventually move, I think I'll build some more wooden stands, but just kind of expanding the room a little bit. I have my little aquaponics going up there, did a part one and two to that. I'm going to let it run for about a month, let the mint get real thick and then I'll do another video on that, show you how it's working. And over here you see this piece of wood. I'm going to hang a shelf here today, so step back, I got some stuff in the way. got a fish stand there that I just use for storage and food. I'm uh, going to clean some things up today. I have a bird, he's outside on a stand right now, but he's in the fish room. He likes the warmth and kind of keeps all the pets in one area. Um, but this, I'm going to go ahead and hang right here. Uh, it was actually my project for the morning before I go to work. Um, but I'll hang that real quick. You guys won't have to sit through that. And I will go ahead and walk through some of the tanks for you. Alright, so we got the shelf up. Uh, pretty easy. Just had to find a stud that was easy from there. Uh, these studs are 24 inches apart. 16 inches is standard. Um, and while you're doing this, just do it in a straight line. If you're checking with the screw or anything or with a nail, I uh, do it right behind the board so it'll all be hidden. Um, and by doing this, I'll be able to have more space to hatch out my eggs and get some fry up here. Uh, so there are some germ blue rims in there and there's some young ones in here. Um, one thing I'll probably have to do is do some clear containers so I can see into them. Uh, if I do the white bowls, I'll probably still keep them down here, but it'd be nice uh, to run my air pumps over here. These are only for a few extra tanks and for my fry to hatch. Everything else in the room is running off that pump in the wall I showed. Um, but that's the shelf. Let's go ahead and look at the tanks. The wall tank here, I have a trio of the yellow half black guppies. Uh, there's one of the females there, and there's the male. Um, I'm doing all fake plants in this tank. They're really easy to pull everything out, catch the fry. Uh, I just added them a few days ago. I did a video on that, and I already have some new fry in here. Um, kind of jumping around behind the cords and there you can see the mess of the base room on the other side um, but we have some young fry in here from them they're just a few days old and there's a few that are probably about two to three weeks old um, that were for a, from a different group of yellow half black so I'll let them grow up a little bit more and then I'll catch those guys out um, but let's just keep moving through all the tanks this is a 20 high I've had this tank running for at least a year or two now. Um, the moss and java fern lace is growing well. Pretty dense and I have some orange shrimp in here. Hanging out on the sponge filter. Once I feed these guys, uh, usually I'll put it over here where it's kind of a bare bottom spot. And they'll all kind of group up here and they'll feed. But I don't treat them any way special. I treat them like my fish. So I think I'm making the strain hardier over time. And they can handle my large water changes and a lot of food, so they're doing pretty well. And I have some fancy guppies in here with them. Uh, they did have some babies just the other day. So over on the other side, I spotted a few. Right there in the middle of the screen, you can see a little fry there kind of hanging out. Uh, I think he just ate a piece of flake food because I fed them maybe five or ten minutes ago. Uh, I started this video in the morning, but 
had to finish it up now after work, but we're gonna keep going through all the tanks. Not spend a ton of time on each one, but I really wanna give you a tour of the fish room. This whole rack here is all 20 longs. I have currently, I think a trio or a pair of yellow half blacks in here somewhere. There's a the male. So I think I have one or two frying here, but they're still eating their babies or something's going on, but I need to start adding more hiding places in here and let them uh, have their babies, which there you can see there's one of them and make sure they all make it. Uh, for my hiding places, I'm using just acrylic yarn in a few of my tanks. And up here, there's a bunch of babies growing out in the hang on box. And these are yellow half blacks from a different female. Uh, I dropped her in here with a lot of hiding places. She had her babies. I removed her and the, the mops I had in there. So they're about, I think a month old. I wrote on the tank here, so fry on 218. Today is 315. So they're about a month old. And uh, all my products I'm showing today, anything that you guys are like, oh, I wanna get that, uh, I'll put in the description below. This tank here, I have a trio of some fancy guppies. So these actually came from that moss tank I showed, the 20 high. And I selected my nicest male. I'm really working on their tails. Uh, his is more squared off, more consistent, but it's still a little tattered. Um, so I'm breeding these guys for color and over time, improving their tails. And I do have a handful of fry in here. Uh, nothing too impressive, but they are breeding, they're having fry, and they're still young. So next month or two when I have their babies again, I assume that I'll get much larger survival rates. Working down through the rack, I have some red delta guppies in here. Uh, they're not quite like a full red delta right now, so I'm just selling them as red guppies. But I think I got three males in here and six or seven females. And I spotted a few fry the other day, but they definitely been feeding on their babies, which is why they've been harder to work with and getting a lot of babies to work with. So gotta separate those guys into some smaller pairs and trios, but I wanted to keep enough of them um, whenever I was separating them. So I'll probably go back and select this male here because he's got a whole lot of red and we can keep working on those tails over time getting them back to that delta squared off tail. And I'm keeping them with my super red bristlenose plecos that are grow outs. Uh, I had a pair in here that bred and they bred I think two times. I got two different generations in here. And there's a baby right there of the fry from the guppies. But I moved the parents out and now I'm just growing the baby so I don't have to worry about them having babies again and having three, four generations of different size plecos. So, Growing these guys out, I think I've already sold about 15 of them um, through my website, biancosfish.com. Uh, that'll be in the description as well. Here we have some German Blue Rams. Um, they're growing out. They're probably about a month away from sale. Whenever I sell my order guys, these guys will move to a larger tank and it'll kind of just keep cycling that process of breeding babies behind babies and growing them out at different ages. And they're with some grow outs of the long fin bristle nose. So this is one of my males I plan on breeding uh, here shortly. I put these guys all in here around an inch. So I got one or two males and a few females. Uh, some still have some growing to do. Here we have some super red plecos also. Uh, this guy here is about big enough to sell. So I try to get them to a good enough size. If they're a little bit smaller, I can still sell them. but. I want their color to look nice and I want them to be old enough and healthy that I can uh, fast them for a few days and ship them out with them having no problems. Uh, with them I am breeding some guppies. I think I have a pair of the, those are trio of the fancy guppies in here. Down to the bottom tanks of the rack, uh, I have some red guppies growing out. Uh, I have some with a little bit of snake skin in them. So I want to kind of work that out. I'll probably have to pick out the nicest ones with the most red and separate males and females. And they're hanging out with some bristlenose plecos. There are long fins and commons, maybe a handful of albinos, uh, but I think I pulled them out. But some of those guys are the commons are getting pretty big. Ready to start selling these and this tank just gets really dirty because I feed them so much and there's no acrylic yarn in here. Uh, that definitely helps grow bacteria and helps the waste settle somewhere so the water's not 
constantly getting turned around and I plan on removing the plecos and putting in some long fins in here to breed. That's kind of why I have that written on the tank. Next to those guys, pretty similar setup. Uh, getting kind of cloudy with all the plecos and I got some snails in here. But I put in a trio of my Fancy Guppy Project, which I did a video on that, my guppy crossbreeding. Um, but we're going to keep moving through the tanks. There's one of the females and the males kind of picking for some food in there too. Really cool tank here. These are my blue eye leucistic spot plecos. So they've bred once or twice. They keep pushing the eggs out of the cave. Uh, most likely because I have too many in here. So they are breeding, they're settling in, um, but I think they're breeding in the mops and there's too many males going in and out of the caves. This guy here is pretty established. You can see his nose sticking out of the cave, so he's looking real good. And there's a female next to him. And if you look right on her back, there's a dark spot. That spot there is something different than I've ever seen. So that's really what I'm working on. Recreating, getting those uh, spots on them. And they're hanging out with some red guppies also. And they do have some fry. These plecos are producing a large variety of different colors. So I'm getting albinos and standards. Um, the standards have some, like the common color, there's some long fins. And I had a pair of purple delta guppies in here. I think I lost the female, the male still in there, but they have some fry. Uh, right there in the middle of the tank, if we can see there's a baby there, but there's a good dozen or so fry in here. And some really big breeder plecos in the cave. Right here you can see one of the females. And I plan on doing a highlight video on the male in the cave. He is just huge. Uh, you can see his bristles right there, and I'm not even sure if that's the dominant male. I think it is. Uh, look how big he is, and look how long his fins are. It's like he's got a cape on him. So he's really cool. I gotta breed him with some super reds, or the blue eyes, or some other long fins to kind of help get some better babies out of here. But I'm getting a really nice mix, so I just haven't messed with them yet. Um, but I have started breeding these guys then moving the parents out and letting the babies grow so this tank's definitely ready for that you can see a nice long fin baby albino right in the middle there so if i pull the parents out and right now i have a couple males and a couple females it's not just a pair uh, i can pull them out let them breed in another tank and kind of restart that process while these babies can have some extra space to grow and more food for them these plecos are breeding pretty well. Uh, I have a common and a albino over here. And you can see some babies in the background. Even on that back wall is a real young guy. Uh, so I'm crushing these guys with algae wafers and food so that the babies can go. Uh, keep getting a constant food source. And I had a cool video of these guys where I actually spotted them in the cave when the male was still fanning them and they were about half that size. So really cool spotting plecos in the cave. Uh, kind of hard to see past all my writing. I use a paint sharpie to write on my tanks and I've been doing that for a while. I learned it from a pet store and it's super easy. You write on the tanks what they are, the dates, and you can just scratch off the razor blade. have some red deltas in here too or I keep saying delta but some of them are but they're really just like an assorted red guppy at this point. Um, not super expensive. Uh, I have them on the website here in the next few months. Because uh, you can see there's some babies. I just got to go through and sort stuff and there's some fake plants in here Just bought from the dollar store and they are just covered with baby plecos of different sizes A few of these guys are pretty cool. They're actually almost a long fin um, They get a little bit of white on the tips of their fin not quite a full long fin like most of mine, but uh, some of those females that are standard fins carry the long fit gene so it's cool they're throwing like a medium length fin so just a really nice pleco, but I'm not gonna sell it anymore. Uh, just kind of a little bit more enticing to buy because they do look nice and they have a little extra color to them. I have some purple deltas in here that are breeding really well. Uh, ready to go through and sort these guys into males and females uh, just for assorted sales. And any of my true tanks, they'll come from somewhere else where I separate the babies much younger. Some really cool plecos in here though. If you look on that cave, I have a calico a long fin albino and a common long fin all in that same shot uh, there's even a long fin calico so really starting to organize those guys i want to pull out the female in here the adult and let the babies grow up 
Uh, that way I can kind of monitor them more. I might even start separating them by color, even though they're all siblings. They came from just a mix from the parents. They have really complex genetics I've been working on and mixing things for certain reasons. So really happy that's starting to pay off and I'm getting what I was hoping for. But gotta separate these guys, put them on the website. Uh, people have been asking for them, but they're still just a little bit small. Ready to sell now, but I don't wanna run out of them. Uh, I wanna have enough for myself to grow out and breed because I don't have any adult long fin reds or calicos. So definitely need to keep on holding on to these guys, growing them out, breed them for myself. So I have tons more in the future to sell for you guys. And those purple just look great. I'm calling some like a purple painted. They get a little bit of yellow in the tail. They have some blue and orange spots on their side. Just a really cool looking guppy. This is my German Blue Ram breeding tank. Uh, the way I'm set it up right now, uh, I've done it tons of different ways, but I got two males and a handful of females. They have any time, anywhere from two to three flower pots in there. I usually put one on each corner of the tank and one in the middle but they just bred in the middle one, so I pulled it out to hatch the fry. The German Blues are one of my favorite Rams. The Golds are nice, uh, but I don't think they have enough color for me. And the Electric bl Blues, I haven't had a hardy strain that really wanted to live and thrive and breed for me. So still working on getting some Blues in the future, but it's always a process of quarantine fish. So just enjoying my German Blue Rams for now. I've been breeding those guys for two or three years now in line breeding, so all my own fish I've been crossing from different generations, but I have not brought a new ram into my fish room since I first started. So I think that's pretty cool. And I, I know that they're doing well. So definitely kind of proving out what you can breed and how long you can do it, how many generations. Uh, make sure you breed healthy fish to healthy fish because anytime you're line breeding, if you breed a fish that has any deformities, the babies are going to show more and more of those deformities over time. Nothing too exciting in here, but I had maybe a hundred baby angelfish that I moved to the 55 gallon tank. So we'll see those in the future. And I have a super red pluck out in here somewhere, um, but I really doubt we'll be able to find them. He might be under the sponge filter, but he's not. So keep moving along. These top two tanks are pretty similar. So I'll kind of just do them at the same time, but I have some purple deltas. Uh, the tank to the right are the purple painted deltas and I'm getting a lot of the kind of painted or just uh, splashes of color in them that I was hoping for and there's some babies. This tank I put three pregnant females in there and they had their babies and I think since then they've all passed away uh, but I have lots of babies to show for them. Males and females, even some younger guys so start moving these guys apart. And when you take a closer look at these, we might be able to see a few of my timers are going off, but you can see a little bit of color. There's two males that are hanging out the top, uh, kind of close to each other. The one's in the corner, the one's in the middle of the shot. Uh, they have some nice colors in the mix of that purple. And I just want to maintain that squared off tail. And the colors can kind of vary in my opinion. I like to have some variety in my guppies. These top three tanks, I'm breeding fancy guppies, purple deltas, and the other two and all of them right now have babies. Uh, they're running off of the matte and sponge filters and it's a lot of glare up here, so we're gonna just fight it and kind of work through there. But there's babies in all these tanks. I uh, will be separating some of these guys here in the future once I sell some more guppies and make some space for them. And this is a fancy pair that I've had for quite some time. Produced a lot of cool colors, but still work on the tails. Next row, the 10 gallons, I'm breeding uh, some more guppies in here. Uh, all these tanks uh, from here down, I have a variety of uh, plecos in there. I have a handful in some tanks. I have one or two in others. And I'm just trying to grow those guys out for breeders. In here, this hang on box, uh, I let it grow a lot of algae. And I put a handful of baby spot albino plecos, or the blue eyes of cystics. And let's see if we can spot some of them because I know they're in here. There's one that I go on the side, you can see, but they're real small. They're probably not even a quarter of an inch, so keep moving through those. These are my German Blue Rams I'm growing out, and like I said, babies behind babies. These are about two months away from selling, so 
they're gonna move to that 20 gallon long once those guys move to the 55 gallon. And I got some really cool plecos in here. Uh, these are all my holdbacks that people keep asking for. And I can't wait till I grow them up and breed them and I actually have enough um, stock where I can sell these guys on the website. There's uh, some calicos, some longfin common, some super reds, even some albinos. So the rams are getting in front of us, so we can't really focus on them too much, but they're doing well. Uh, the matte sponge filter is nice, but I preferably like to do a couple sponge filters with the plecos. Uh, the matte filters, I think, can be really hard to clean. Uh, if I do plecos for a long period of time, they're going to get real clogged up. And I don't want to clean these every month or two. I'd rather do it every six months to a year. So with the plecos, I'll probably end up doing it once a month cleaning. So once they get a little bit bigger, I'll move these guys out, sell some, and probably pick another tank. These are some of the yellow half blacks that I pulled from the 55. Uh, all the older ones, the males and females, went to male and female tanks. Um, but some of the babies and some of the sexing out males and females at the time that I couldn't tell, like that's a male right there. These are obviously females up here. Um, but whenever I was sorting them, they were colored down. It was harder to tell. So I kept a few of them in this tank with the babies and just kind of back up if I lost any. And here are those F2 crossbreeding project of the guppies. Um, that's the male that I end up selecting. He's got like some snake skin on him. The tail's a little tattered, but it's mostly squared off like a delta. And then the female's got some nice colors to her also. So excited for these to breed. Um, whenever people say F1, F2, F3, all that means is you breed sibling to sibling. And then whenever they have babies, you separate the babies, grow them up take the nicest two and breed them together then you get the next F. So that just means each generation of breeding sibling to sibling and they say you can do that up to five times before you have to outcross um, but if you breed father to daughter colony breed uh, you can make that number stretch much further but you won't get the same results in the same F numbers. Lots of angelfish in this tank and they'll be going to that 20 gallon that was empty uh, that I pulled the angelfish from. So they're doing well, they're pushing fins. Once I move them over there, I'll probably let them grow for another two or three weeks. And then I'll move them to the 55 gallon and that's when I'll make any calls. Uh, if there's anything now that I see, I can call them. Like these little guys kind of struggling to swim. That's just genetics. It's not a lack of care or food. So any fish like this, you definitely have to make your calls. And I have some really nice plecos in here too growing out with them. That calico just looks really nice. I'm excited to breed these guys. Hopefully if I breed calico to calico, I'll get calicos. But that may take a generation or two to get them breeding true. These are some F2 painted purple guppies. Uh, kind of fighting the glare a little bit, but they're around three months, maybe four months old. So they're starting to breed. I haven't spotted any fry, but they're kind of new to the tank. So brighter blues and purples in this generation but i kind of selected for that i want to have bright fish i don't want black guppies so i want to add color to them and just keep those tails nice down in the bottom three tanks these are all red guppies so what the way this actually happened um over time this is my nice this is a delta a red delta guppy so if he moves for us see if i can get him out a little bit he has nice body shape, really nice tail, and he's with a female. He almost looks a little bit albino, so we'll see what happens there. But she's got some red in her tail too. Having trouble focusing on these guys, but they started all three of these tanks. I had things in these two tanks at one point while they were breeding in here, but they had some babies. I caught the parents out, moved them over here. They had babies again, and then I moved them over here, and I'm waiting for them to have babies again. So I pulled out guppies from this tank and I left my nicest reds, which we're just having trouble seeing. But I left some of the reds, some of them had like a snake skin to them. So I pulled them out and I let these guys breed, they'll be like an F2. And then same thing with these babies. Um, I'm gonna grow them up, keep the nicest ones in here because I wanna get my red numbers up, uh, get some more breeding tanks of them. And eventually I can cross this tank and that tank, even though they came from the same parents, um, they're not actually brother and sister. Generally, I mean, they'll be younger from the same parents, so I guess they'd be like 
an older or younger brother, but not the same age like a twin. Moving on to the 40 gallon tanks. Uh, this tank here has hundreds of plecos and some really cool colors. So we'll go closer, take a nice look at them. But this is where I'm breeding an assortment of long fin commons together and a few commons in there that carry the long fin gene. So let's see what we got. They're throwing all different sorts of colors. I have albinos, commons, some super reds, and some calicos. And all four of those colors I have in standard fin and in long fin. So really cool genetics to these and none of it's really random. Um, just a real quick talk about the parents. I had a long fin albino and a standard fin super red breed. They produce all commons and common long fins and that's what these parents are. So they're like the F2, I bred them together. Now I'm finally starting to see their parents genetics starting to show up. So don't ever give up on a strain. If you breed reds together and you don't get reds, breed their babies together, get your F2s and you should start to see reds. And if not, don't give up, breed those babies again on your F3s. Uh, you definitely should get some reds. So whatever color it is, whatever fish it is, uh, that principle applies. And that's what line breeding really is. This is my bristlenose pleco sale tank. Finally getting the size where I'll sell these wholesale to a pet store. Uh, they'll usually buy a hundred commons and a hundred albinos at a time. So it takes me a long time to catch them. I think I'm going to start making some pleco traps where I put some food in a net or I put it inside like a water bottle. Let them swim in there and I can pull a lot more out or like a two liter bottle. So I saw someone doing that. I think it's a great idea and I don't know why I'm not already doing it. But even just adding any objects in here like these uh, flower pots. I put them in there because they had some dried up eggs on them from uh, rams that never hatched. So I put them in there, they'll clean them up. It's also a food source. But now if I wanna get a net under one of these flower pots, I can catch a good 20 plecos at once and uh, just save a lot more time and a lot less stress on the fish. But we'll keep moving. I have some uh, guppies in here too. I put one red female in here and she had some babies. So they're all hanging out, growing out together. And the plecos are commons, albinos, and there's even some blue-eyed leucistics in here like this guy right there. Last 40 gallon tank is one of my cooler tanks, but the absolute worst glare in the fish room. So I have nine angelfish in here. They actually bred on the back wall the other day and I scraped, I scraped off the eggs. So hopefully those will hatch. This was the father to him. Uh, he's that fish I brought back to the fish room. I sold to a customer. He outgrew their tank. He was being a bully and I brought him back. So he actually decided to breed and that's really cool. I got my little buddy here, the balloon ram. He's hanging out because he was in the 55, but I had to move him because I sold the larger angels and there's small guys in there. I don't want him picking on any of the babies. So moved him over here. He's not a breeder, just kind of my pet. Pretty cool. I also have some adult bristlenose females in here. Uh, they'll come to the front whenever I feed them, but I'm not gonna waste your time with the glare, but there are some beautiful marbles and platinum angelfish in here. All right, moving on to the black rod iron stands. Checking in, if you're still watching the video, I really appreciate it. I know we're going slow, um, but I love watching videos just like this. Walking through the fish room, looking at the fish, actually going close, trying to get a shot if it's clear or not. Um, I kind of like that old school fish room viewing. So that's what I'm showing you guys today. The fish room update if you're still watching comment and if you want to buy any fish from my website biancosfish.com type this code in there and email me i'll give you some extra fish give you a good price kind of just help you out for being a subscriber um, a supporter of the channel so just put that in in the ps of your email and i'll hook you guys up first tank moving on to the rod iron stands is some pleco grow outs and this is the clearest the tank's ever been. I had a bunch of guppies in here, maybe like 80 guppies and like 200 plecos and I could not keep this tank clean. Um, it was low on nitrates, zero ammonia, so it was cycled, um, but the filter still had to kind of get with the groove. But I took the guppies out, gave it a few weeks. I've been going through and gravel vacuuming all that extra waste off the bottom, that kind of like mom and now the tank is looking crystal clear 
it doesn't hurt that I did water changes a day or two ago, um, but I'm glad it's clear for the video. We have a lot of babies in here from that tank where I had the male super reds and I showed you the two females that were common and albino. So they threw some albinos and a lot of commons. I'm sure these commons, if I bred them together, I get some reds, but I think I'm just gonna grow them up, sell them as commons and focus on some of my other strains that are producing more true. And I think I slept a few extra plecas in here. I know this guy was in there before I added the babies. He is a grow out of the blue eye leucistic. He's not gonna let us see him today. Yeah, you can kind of see him, but young male there. Uh, holding back a handful of those in different tanks that I can breed together eventually and Hanging on this tank. Uh, this is not connected to the water. Just a little hang on specimen container uh, It's pretty cool. Actually, they're starting to hatch uh, First time I'm taking a close look today, and it's just starting But you can see some blackness there. Those are the eyes starting to develop. These are the angelfish From that top 40 on tank some fungus eggs doesn't bother me much I'll just do water changes if the water gets cloudy. Once they hatch, I'll start siphoning the old eggs out, but that's pretty cool. Just some clean tap water with the chlorinator and some methylene blue air stone, and you'll have baby fish in no time. In here, we have some more fancy guppies kind of breeding a little bit. I uh, have some fry in there, and the males look awesome. So we'll go closer and look at those guys, um, but the closer I get, it gets more blurry. I have some baby plecos left. I tried catching as many out as I could because the plan for this tank is to put all of my extra adult plecos that I'm not breeding, um, but are higher quality, like my long fins, my reds, my blue eyed leucistics, anything of size that I don't have tank space for to put them all in pairs and have 10 tanks breeding because I know I'll get overrun with babies and nowhere to put the babies and grow them out healthy. So I plan on putting them in here with no caves uh, if they breed, sure, I'll scoop out the eggs, try to hatch them, but I kind of want to just keep them on backstock in this tank, and I'll probably only have plecos, but for the time being, I have the guppies in here, and we'll see if we can get a shot of the males, because they're really cool. can kind of see them there. I have two males, and I think four females, and they're kind of schooling up right now, which is pretty neat. Uh, I'm trying to tap the screen, let it focus. There's a male kind of showing off. Uh, looking to upgrade my camera, but as of right now, the good old iPhone and the tripod's getting the job done for now. Um, if I get more subscribers and I start making some money off my videos, then I can kind of justify my costs and uh, buy a nice camera, make some nicer quality videos uh, with the actual view. But if I take my time, let my camera focus, right now you can kind of see those guppies showing off. They're looking great. And down here, I have lots of fry there, just a few days old. Uh, so you got one kind of drifting away. And above that sponge filter, you can see some little blurs, which are just baby guppies. And using that acrylic yarn as always. Here we have a 55 gallon tank, all female guppies. Might be a male or two in there, because I know I have some pregnant females that had babies. If the babies survive, uh, obviously you're gonna get males and females. So. I'll go through and pull out any young males that ever show up. And with those guys, I have some plecos breeding, some babies I'm just growing out that I have to catch. So I usually will let parents breed, pull them out, let the babies grow. Uh, in this case, I did that, but then I added another pair thinking I would catch them out later. And I didn't think the parents would breed, but they actually did. So you can see some smaller ones in there. And I spotted one or two super reds and that could have only came from the pair I have now. It's a super red male and a long fin female, which she's actually in the cave right now. So I can see her fins, even though I'm crawling around the ground, I'm getting glare. Um, can kind of see her tail there and I can see her fins, but it's not catching on camera. But she's in there with the male, so they're probably breeding again because that small baby I showed you uh, is definitely about a month or two old. So they're probably breeding again by now. And that's pretty cool. We'll see what we get from those guys. There's that cloud of guppies, and they're really cool. If I go above, um, they're real responsive. Uh, they're almost like a pond fish right now. So if I put my hand up, they'll usually swarm up for me. Let's see if we'll do it. I already fed them today, but you can see, not dramatically, but they're definitely swarming up. It's pretty cool. 
This is where those angelfish move to. So 55 gallon on top. These are all double stack rod iron stands. I uh, really like these stands. I did a review on them when my channel was smaller. If you want to go back and check it out, uh, put a little card above. But these stands are awesome. They're all under a hundred bucks and you build them in four minutes. It's just easy. I mean, time is money. If you want to get something done and have it be sturdy, be simple, I like these. But the angelfish are doing well. I already went through and made my calls when I moved them over from the 20 gallon. Um, so pretty much all these guys, there might be one or two that slipped through the cracks, but these will all be going for sale. Um, I'll put them on my website. I'll probably just call them assorted angelfish because if you want a certain angelfish, go buy a certain angelfish. If you want just angelfish that are healthy for a good price, um, then I'm your guy. Uh, for the guppies, I'll give you some colors and strains, but I like the assorted fish. Um, I want a guppy or an angelfish or a ram. Um, you can breed stuff and not always have a specific color because then sometimes they get too weak. Um, I breed for health first, and if I can get nice colors along the way, um, that's absolutely what I do. But if the fish aren't healthy, if I have super red angelfish that look beautiful, but they get sick every two months and they don't eat, I don't really care. I just want healthy angelfish. And these guys are just that. Um, and they're really nice color too, so it's a bonus, but I can't tell you that they're a perfect uh, line bred angelfish. They're gonna produce this and that. Um, I got platinums in here, I got marbles, I have some koi. Some of the guys carry this super red gene, um, but none of them are super reds, but if I bred them together, that are koi's i might get super reds but that's kind of a little rant on my breeding angelfish and stuff but they're really cool uh sell these wholesale and online but let's keep moving along before we jump to the next tank i actually got some plecos in here too uh this guy is a just an albino i believe but i do have a female albino and a blue eyed leucistic he's on the other side of sponge filter and another thing i wanted to show is I got my Bianca School of Fish stickers. So maybe if you guys watch the end of the video, I'll leave another code. If you already watched it there and you buy some fish, I'll toss in one of my stickers with your uh, purchase. So Bianca School of Fish, um, started off as Pittsburgh Pets. That's my YouTube channel, um, but it kind of owns or is partners, whatever you want to call it with Bianca School of Fish. Uh, that's my fish name for selling and for my aquarium service. So. Pretty cool, I got like 50 of those stickers for my own use and just give them some people, I think they're kind of fun. Up here I have my little aquaponics project. Uh, fish room tour, it's part of the fish room. They're growing super well. Uh, I did a part one and a part two on this, so if you're waiting for part three, not as many people watch it as my fish videos, my guppy videos, but uh, I think it's really cool, it's informative. Um, blowing air in this random tube shoots a tiny tiny bit of water in here just enough to fill it up and i got an overflow in the center uh, and these guys are growing good they smell awesome i'll keep cutting them putting them down there they're a stem plant and it'll help filter my tanks and it just kind of looks cool so moving on from that but a little sneak peek if you haven't seen the final product this is kind of it but it's going to grow a lot thicker and i'm probably going to do a video on this in about a month when it's super dense here i have some pleco eggs a lot of them fungus up, we'll keep moving, but I'm sure I'll get a few babies out of here. Um, I really need to just put them, I need the parents to breed in the tank, let them hatch in there and have a full cycle tank. Um, whenever you lose more than half of the babies, uh, the eggs fungus up, usually fouls the water too much and it's too hard to kind of go through. But if you ever pull eggs, I'll just toss them in, throw an air stone. Pretty simple, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it's not usually your fault. Here I have some uh, ram fry. They're pretty small, not a huge survival rate in this one, but you can see them up towards the top there hanging out. They'll get some brine shrimp, hang these little white containers with no corners, and an air stone for the first few months of their life. Jump into the 10 gallons, and I don't know how long this video is, but I'm sure it's getting long, so we'll go faster, but these are babies from the yellow half blacks that I moved to the 55 gallon tank we showed first. So that trio produced these babies here. They're finally starting to color up, uh, separate them, definitely get some F3s out of this because uh, those are F2s, the parents. And I'll hopefully continue that strain, nice tails, kind of just maintain it and work on healthier guppies each generation. And then they have some younger brothers and sisters from the same parents in here and some really cool plecos. 
Uh, I told you I spread them out. There's a blue eye leucistic, a super red back there, a real big blue eye leucistic. I think it's a young male, but let's keep moving. Down here is kind of the same thing, but I still have the parents in there. Those are some yellow half blacks. These are my cross breeding guppies. Uh, they're getting older. They're still producing some fry, but that's kind of where those F2s came from. With my cross breeding, I got that purple delta and some fancy guppies. Here's a new pairing. I have two red guppies in here. They're not super, super nice, but they have good color. They're super hardy. Uh, they'll just be like an assorted red, but they're hanging out the top to the new tank. I can't wait for them to drop some fry in here, uh, add some decorations, and keep working with the reds. As I've already shown, here's the fry rack. Uh, I think it looks really clean. I like it. I have enough space to work in between it. It doesn't block too much light because the tanks out overhang underneath so light still gets to them. Um, but up here I just got some uh, ram fry that are about a month old ready for a tank. And then some uh, younger rams that are still young. They're fragile. We'll see if they make it. I probably only have a couple dozen in there. Um, but that's, that's going to be hard to see. Let's go to the last two tanks. These are the males. So all these guys came from different breeder tanks. A lot of them are pure strains. Some of them are just mutts. So I can go through and kind of pull whatever I'd like out of here if I want to breed stuff. Getting a lot of glare here. You're kind of seeing me stand on the floor. But there's some really nice males in here. There's a nice purple delta. I have, this is one of the yellow half black calls. Um, but he's like orange half black, really cool. And I have some fancy ones in here too. Some younger males that are still developing their tails. Um, but I could tell that there was no egg spots and they were definitely males. So they're growing up in here. And I have some adult bristlenose plecos in here. In case you forgot, I still got my bulldog pleco. He hasn't grown much. If you guys are an OG to the channel, um, that right there is my Bulldog Pleco. I will never breed him, but he is a blue eye leucistic, kind of short nosed Pleco, kind of a runt. But the older it gets, the cooler it kind of looks. It looks less deformed, more like a Bulldog, uh, rounded off face instead of just kind of messed up. So he's actually kind of cool. I like him now. Um, there's a nice male blue eyed, and in the caves, there's a whole bunch of males in here. Cause I sold a tree, two trios of adult bristlenose plecos, so I lost four females from this tank, and the males came from somewhere else, so male heavy in this tank now. But keeping the plecos going, back stock, selling some of them locally. Don't like shipping the big guys too much, but I definitely can send you guys a pair. Uh, not super reds, but I got commons and I got albinos uh, if you want to breed them right away for a better price, and the guppies are doing well. Last but not least, I have my adult Dern Blue Rams. Uh, sold about 20 of these guys in the mail the other day. So happy the weather's warming up. Uh, I still have some more to ship out. I got some waiting lists. I got to confirm payments and the address and their temperature, all that good stuff. Um, some of them are washed out. Usually they color up after water change, but sometimes they get a little spooked. So some of them aren't super colored up, but some are doing the opposite where they are coloring up after that water change. And I pulled a lot of plecos out of here. I used to have some baby plecos, but it just would get too much mom on the bottom of the tank, too much feeding. So I pulled them out. I did leave plecos in here. Uh, what I have is a pair of super reds hanging out in the tank. And I think there was one pleco that snuck away and she's in here too. There she is right there. But good sign. I think the plecos are in the cave. I can't see them anywhere else. Usually the females hanging out and the males in there, um, but they're in there. So they're probably breeding here in the next day or two. So that's kind of exciting. I probably should move them because I think the ram feed on the babies when they come out of the cave. So I want the super reds to definitely survive. So I probably should move them soon uh, or pull them once they wiggle in the cave and don't leave. But the rams are looking good for the most part. Um, they're always pretty hardy. I breed my rams for health. Uh, definitely colors will come with it. And whenever they're happy, they look super nice. Um, but those are the germ blue rams. That about wraps it up and my timer just went off on my light, so that's a sign. Wrap the video up, go over, edit it. I'm gonna put this up tonight, hopefully. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fish room tour. Walking through the fish room, sharing things, uh, talking about some other stuff. You know, just fish room stuff. So thank you all for watching. Really appreciate you guys following the channel, watching the videos, checking out my website. 
Biancosfish.com if I haven't mentioned it more than three times already. <laughs> but just want to get my name out there, uh, get good fish to you guys because I've got a lot of good feedback from other people and I really appreciate it. I love the business, I appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of time on my part with all the fish room maintenance, feeding the fish, fasting them, boxing them, doing the payments. Um, but I enjoy it all. It's kind of the, the side business right now and I hope to make it even bigger and bigger over time. But thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more fish room updates and breeding tips. Uh, whatever you guys wanna see, leave in the comments. I'll try to make a video, give you guys a shout out if I like what you ask me to do. But I don't know how long the video is. I'm sure it's way too long. Uh, ending it now. Thanks as always. Like, subscribe. I will see you next time.